they are bringing a body. Oh, right? that's a bar. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on another journey. Today, we're in Nepal. If you're new to the channel, this is April, and I'm Wayne. We do a video every Thursday, so hit that subscribe button and smash that bell. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the journey. If I'm not mistaken, they come down to the river and bathe and then burn their bodies, right? In the past, right, when the river was clean, they used to do that. But nowadays, the river is not so clean. There is a bathroom where they take a shower and then uh, they do this. And when you wash the body, we only wash the feet and face. Because feet is considered as the dirtiest part of the body. And everyone can see the face. That's how we wash the feet and face. Mm -hmm. And after that, the sons, they can carry the body on the bamboo stretcher and bring the dead bodies up to here and they make three circles around the wooden pyre by carrying the dead bodies because in this return we give thanks to our three main gods Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva because Brahma he created us, Vishnu he preserves us and Shiva he destroyed our ignorance and then we place the dead body on the top of the wooden pyre and we start the first fire from the mouth of the dead person. That's also because when we take birth in this world, we take the first breath from our mouth. And when we die, our last breath goes out from the mouth. That means our life. It starts from the mouth and it ends from the mouth. And their eldest son, they start the fire. But if the family, they don't have son, if they have only daughter, daughter, they don't start the fire. Why don't they light the fire for the daughter? like uh, most of the women they have the soft heart oh, okay. Yes. Okay. and when they see their dead family member they become emotional and cry a lot okay. but we believe that when you cry a lot the soul of the dead person can't go to heaven you see the red slab stone which okay. touched the river so that's the place where we purify the bodies the stone is connected with the main chapel so every morning from 9 30 a.m to until 12 p.m when the priest of the main chapel they worship the god there is five things as an offering like milk, water, sugar, yogurt and honey. And everything what we offer inside the temple that comes out from this stone. That's why it's a holy stone. And first the family members, they bring the dead bodies here. And they place the dead body on this stone. And ritually, we toss the feet in the river. Because it's a holy river. And we believe that when we toss the feet in the river, the river was the scene of the dead person. And that helps the person to reduce from the circle of life. And after that, we give water from the river inside the dead body mouth and then we take out the clothes of the dead person and wash the feet and face. And then you see one guy who is wearing white clothes. That's the son of the dead person. After we start the fire, it takes three to four hours to finish one body. But it depends on the size of the body. If the body is bigger, it takes longer. And if it's small, it takes less time. And after three to four hours, when it finishes, the whole body, that turns into a small piece of meat. So the last part of the body, which remains from the body, we keep it inside the white clothes and we put it in the river. It's because in Hindu religion, we do believe that our body is made from five different elements like air, water, fire, skin, earth. And at the end, when you put the remain part of the body in the river, the five different elements of our body, that goes back in the nature. And then it comes back again as reincarnation. That's the reason that in Hindu religion, cremation is always on the bank of the river. When we finish, even the teeth, bones, everything that burn, right? And the ashes which remain from the burning, we throw in the river. And since that time, the family members, they have 13 day ceremony. And for that 13 day ceremony, the sons, the brothers, they save their hair. And the close family members, they wear white clothes. And for 13 days, they stay inside one room and no one is allowed to touch them for 13 days. Even during that time, they have a fasting and meat, salt, alcohol and oil. These four things they are not allowed to eat. That 13 days is very difficult for the family members. Oh. Even after that, also for one year, we don't visit any temples and the family members, they don't celebrate any festivals for the whole year. And it's a Hindu culture to cremate the body, but in Hindu religion, we don't cremate everyone small children under five years and holy men sadhus we bury them because here we believe that when you cremate the body the soul of the dead person that purify with the burning is as we have many god and goddess in hindu religion fire is also considered as a god in hindu religion there is a 
fire god, his name is Agnidev, he have a power to purify the soul of the dead person. So when we cremate the body, the fire god Agnidev, he purifies the soul of the dead person. But small children under five years, they are innocent because they don't know they don't what is know good and what is bad. Yeah, they haven't had the time to be bad yet. Yes, yeah. And sadhus all the time they do meditation. And from the meditation, they purify their soul. That's why they don't need to purify again and we bury them. Yes? In Nepal, when husband die widows, they don't wear red clothes and they don't use red color because red is a symbol of married woman and her whole life they don't remarry with another man. That's why when husband die, life become difficult with the woman. And most of the Nepalese women every day, they put the red color on the top of their forehead. That's for the long life of their husband. And it's in the past, before 1920, as before uh, 100 years ago, when husband died, widow used to jump on the fire with their husband. That's called sati. And during that time, when she jumped on the fire, what if she come back alive? The family members used to put them on the fire again. Did you jump on that fire for me? Probably not. <laughs> That's like one of the worst ways to go. And this test is not only the way to cremate the bodies. We also have electronic crematorium. If uh, the people, they are not from the higher caste, they are not from the Brahmin family, they can't do this job. Uh, this place is also very famous to collect the cornea of eyes of the dead person. If someone wants to donate their cornea, wants to register in a hospital, and when they die, their family members they inform the doctors. The doctors, they come from the hospital and they take out the cornea of eyes. And the cornea, which we take out from the dead body, we transplant to the blind people who need the cornea of eyes. Yes, and it's free for everyone. This is the waiting house where the family members they wait when they kill the body. The Golden Temple. So this is the main temple of this area. The name of the temple is Pashupati Nath. The word Pashupati Nath is made from three words Pashu, Pati, and Nath. Pashu means animals, Pati means God. And this temple is a symbol of peace and prosperity. And there are many festivals of this temple like Sivaratri, Tij, and Balachaturasi. These are the three main festivals of this temple. And Sivaratri is a birthday of God Shiva. It's in February. And during this festival, around one million Hindu people from around the world they visit this temple in one day. And thousands of holy men sadhus they come from India. Yes, and also the naked sadhus they come from India. They never wear clothes. And normally when we spoke has other days, that's illegal. Okay. Right? When we smoke hashes, like that's illegal. But during that day, smoking of hashes is allowed. So everyone can come here and smoke hashes, but only for one day. And the second main <laughs> festival of the temple is called Tij. It's a festival of women. It's in September. And during this festival, women, they wear red clothes. And the whole day, they have a fasting. I mean, water also, they don't drink for the whole day. And gods who are unmarried, they demand with the god Shiva to give them good husband, like Shiva. And women who are already married, they pray with the god Shiva for long life of their husband. And when the temple was first built, in the 4th century by King Supuspadev, it was not a temple like this. It was a temple of stone and it was not only two story, it was five story. And in the 14th century, Muslim people, Mughals, they came from India and they destroyed the first temple. And after that, in the 16th century, there was a queen, her name was Ganga Rani, she made the present temple. And twice we had a big earthquake in Nepal, one is in the 1934, that was the biggest one, and another one is in 2015. But during the both earthquake, nothing was happening in this temple, it's still standing. And the four doors of the temple is made from silver, the pinnacle is made from gold, the idol which is inside the temple, that's also covered by the gold. And the government have used 100 kilograms of gold to cover this statue, so that this is the richest temple of the country. Oh my goodness. Oh, like a wow. Yeah. What year was this built? 1865. Actually, there are 18 temples. 11 temples, they are on a straight line. That's why it looks like a mirror. There are seven more temples on the left side. On the middle of the temple, you will see an idol. This is called Siva Lingam. It represents God Shiva, who is the main god of Hindus. The top part, which looks like an egg, is called Linga. And it's a symbol of masculine part. The round one is called Yoni. And it's a symbol of feminine part. And the masculine part, that represents the sky. And the feminine part represents earth. So without sky and earth, there is no nature. And without nature, there is no creation. It's also a symbol of fertility. That's why when people they get married, if they don't have baby for a long time, they come here. And they pray with the god Shiva to give them child. In the 19th century, the first uh, Rana Prime Minister of the country, his name was Janga Bahadur Rana. 18 official wife. He built these temples for his 18 wives. So one temple for each one. So this is like your Varanasi now? Some rituals are different. In Banarasi, small children under 5 years, sadhus, pregnant women, people who are suffering from leprosy, people who are beaten by the snakes, they don't cremate them. Okay. I heard that they just throw them into the Ganges river. Uh -huh. But here, we never throw the dead bodies in the river. In Banarasi, 
people from the lower caste, Sutra family, they work as a funeral undertaker. The name of the temple is Bhatle Sori. In Sanskrit language, Muslim means lovely and Sori means wife, it means lovely wife. So it's a temple of Parvati. Parvati is a lovely wife of Lord Shiva. We believe that these kinds of pictures protect the temples from lightning. Because in Nepal, we have a living goddess, her name is Kumari. So Kumari is a goddess of lightning and she's a little child. The present one who lives in Kathmandu Darwai Square, she's only eight years old. That's why she don't like sex. And when she comes to destroy the temple and see the picture, she can embarrass and goes back without destroying the temple. That's why we believe that it protects the temple from lightning. In the past time, there was only few population in the country. Because during that time when people they got married, they were very young. They were only eight years old, ten years old. Especially the girls were eight years old and boys were ten years old. That's why they didn't have the idea about sex. And during that time when they visited the temple, they saw the pictures and they learned about sex and that helped to increase the population of the country. It's an education of sex. In the past time before sixth century, human beings used to sacrifice in this temple. Nobody wants to die. That's why there was a trick to choose the people. So first they used to sacrifice one man and after that they used to cut off this finger of that man and organize a food party for the people and invited one man from each house and put that finger inside the vegetables and they distribute food for all of them and the one who got the finger was chosen as the next sacrifice but these days we stop to sacrifice the people but instead of people we sacrifice animals once in a year in March we have a big festival of this temple and during this festival we sacrifice five different animals like buffalo, chicken, goat, sheep and duck because these five animals, these are the symbols of five different ignorance of the people. Like buffalo is a symbol of anger. So sheep is a symbol of stupidity. Because when there is a group of sheep and one sheep drops from the hill, all the sheep they follow. They said goat is a symbol of sex. A chicken is a symbol of laziness. And duck is a symbol of desire. And when the people sacrifice five animals at the temple, we believe that five different ignorance of the people that also destroyed with the five animals. And here, we never sacrifice female animals, we always sacrifice male animals. Because female, they give birth to the children. And just before we sacrifice, we need to take permission with the animals that you are ready for die or not. We put water in our hand and we throw on the head of animals. And when animals, they shake their head like this, it means you are ready to sacrifice. Then we sacrifice the animals. But if they don't shake their head, then we do it again and again until they shake their head. They don't have animals. We want to thank you guys for watching our video all the way to the end. If you would, hit that subscribe button, share it with a friend, and like always, thank you for living life.